Hello there, my fellow Aryans. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last days of your playing as everyone's favorite brotherhood of Aryans. But we need to talk about Beneath the Hooked Cross. It's a sad fact that we stand far below our German masters. They rule over an empire that spans half of Europe. We barely rule over the city of Ponheim and its surroundings, as far as we know. They li likely either have no knowledge or are only vaguely aware of us. If we are to be the loyal servants of the Reich, a Reich, we must start by consolidating our control over the territories under our control and building the institutions of a proud Germanic nation. Every aspect of the state needs to be molded according to the Brotherhood Doctrine. We need more Aryans to run the government and military and more laborers and slaves to work our factories. Our ideology needs to be clarified and applied to every part of life. With enough time and effort, we can build a nation with that the Germans would be proud to witness. Absolutely, positively lutely And which will be bolstering our ranks next, but beneath Hook Cross, as he was led to the ceremony room, Dmitry Balochev tried to calm his racing thoughts. He recalled wisdom from the doctrine the mind had a hierarchy of thoughts, just as a body had a hierarchy of blood, fear, doubt, and anxiety were the brain patterns of vermin. Aryans thought only of strength and courage, violence and conquest. Nervousness was a vestige of the inferiority he would soon leave behind. After what felt like an eternity, he reached the end of the long corridor and entered the Grand Hall. Aryans, members of the organization, sat in a horseshoe surrounding the center of the room with a cloaked higher-ranked member on an elevated seat in the center. Dmitri dropped to his knees instinctively and initiated Bolochev rise. The hooded figure spoke in a soft voice that, nonetheless, carried through the chamber. He obeyed in attempting to mimic the dignified figure of the Nordic ideal as he stood. You have performed admirably in the trial, served with unflinching loyalty in all the duties of the initiate. You have sworn the oaths to the folk. Reich and Führer. You have proven yourself as one of the among the elect. Revel, uh, revel in the worthiness of your blood, Matthias Gersfeld. Welcome to the Aryan Brotherhood. Uh, the seated members clapped politely as Matthias received the proof of a superiority. A swastika pin, which he proudly attached to his lapel. His haughty posture and affectation, only a few minutes before, was now genuine. He felt pride and hatred pervade him to the bone. He was part of a small elite class, high above the millions of vermin that filled Russia, and he would die before relinquishing that status. The Aryan Brotherhood gains another member. Beautiful. And look at that stability. Negative 42%, but that's okay. Bolstering our ranks, though it is a fact born out of its definition. The Aryan is within but a few of us. We acknowledge the sad, perhaps inconvenient truth that the lesser peoples have no place among our ranks. We also look towards Germany with not only admiration, but also envy. With so many of the chosen people, their continent spanning empires destined to be eternal, and without equal. And the vastness of Russia, and its land, and its folk, we are but a mere moat of dust. This situation must be rectified. Though they may be rare, they there are Russians, just like ourselves, who are worthy and blood indeed to become one of us in a sin. However, these will not come to us, befitting of their worth, and we must seek them out. In the silence of the night, when the bombers die down, we shall search for them. We shall take them forcibly, for the blood yearns to rejoin with its kin, as we will begin and scavenge with loot. Uh, and I will spend a lot of time here with the economy. Um, <clears throat> we have a terrible credit rating. But at least we're not junk. We have a GDP of 0.47 billion, and uh, debt is actually actually pretty darn high. 12.5 billion already. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Our debt is actually 0 0.412, which is actually really quite bad. Um, honestly, uh, we don't have a lot of growth here, which does kind of suck. I want to cut down that debt. It's going up a little bit. Point five sucks. But if you'd like to read about the modern bogatier, please go right ahead. Did I have to click on this? Oh, my goodness. My bad. It's alright, though. After we bolster our ranks, though, the role of our race. The German bombers fly over the skies. The swastika proudly emblazoned on both of its wings. Beautiful airborne teachers that instruct the lesser peoples to know their place. That they find us unequal is no surprise, however. Despite the fact of our apparent superiority to the Untermensch, we are no closer to reaching the heights of our brethren in Germany instead. We wander not knowing what path to pursue to enlighten ourselves. In our current state, the Führer, the godly and divine being that commands the Germans, will look at us in contempt, silent to him. We are no different from the Russians, our perfection in being useless, without guidance and destiny, he, like the planes above, offer no counsel nor advice. However, where he quite quit, quietens, we must speak, the brotherhood shall gather, and all the words said shall pay the road that we must walk. The search for the chosen. Dimitri's night was quiet, the German planes had stopped, in the woods where he lived, all was silent, save for the crackling campfire, and still whispering band of men sitting around it. The air stirred. He drew a long stretch of his cigarette, watching the embers bloom and fade to gray. Along with the aroma of the tobacco, the images of home and family entered his mind, filling his thoughts in a gentle smokeless haze. Smoking haze. He shook the cigarette gingerly and let its ashes dissipate into the wind. Warm and comfortable, he felt his eyelids sag and dozed off. 
He awoke to the sound of boots trampling through the forest. Some of the men had abandoned their places already, leaving behind whatever they'd taken to this sacred place in the distance. Dimitri could hear the faint rubbing of a truck. Then the gunshots came. Men dressed in black uniforms emerged into the clearing. He and the rest of the companions huddled together as the yoke of these men slowly wound themselves closer. Do not be alerted, he heard a voice say. Its owner strolled behind his men, his hands clasped behind his hip. Rejoice instead, for the Brotherhood has come to you this night to deliver neither death nor doom but hope. He paused, looking at Dimitri. He went closer into the circle and squatted down, gently rubbing, running his fingers through Dimitri's rough cheeks and beard. I can feel that we are the same blood already, brother. He stood up, looking straight into Dimitri's eyes and said, If you only would still your shivers, then you would be worthy. Bending down, he put his palms on Dimitri's shoulders, but there's always an opportunity to improve. Now get up. He offered his hand, and Dimitri grasped it without hesitation. Good, 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 brother, he said. Swinging his arms around Dimitri's neck, now follow us. He looked at the rest of the companions in contempt and said, liquidate the rest. Dimitri dared not look back, even as the screams ensued and ceased. The brotherhood grows. Instilling fear. Ooh, we got a lot of manpower. It's quite a bit of manpower now. We're still mobilizing. Interesting. Oh, and I forgot to make divisions, but now we can do an overseer cast, and our army will be composed of uh, comprised of non aliens or we can do a warrior cast. Now I did check last time. I have played Aaron Brotherhood before, and I did go the hyper warrior route. But for us, I want to go the warrior cast, and our army will be comprised of aliens, reducing our manpower but increasing combat abilities. The Nordics of the ancient ages celebrated their warriors. They molded their society following the will of the gods to fight, win triumph. When they die in battle, the Valkyries descend and choose from among the dead those that prove themselves to be Odin's own. Their obedience to the blood rewarded them with land, loot, power, and above all victory. Theirs was an ideal existence, unhampered by such pedestrian concerns as survival. To become worthy of the foyer and the Germans, we will emulate these Vikings in their myths and legends. The Aryans of Russia shall make battlefields their home, fighting from the front lines, finding worthy death as an end. War shall choose who among us is true, pure, and righteous. No more shall the chosen people be held back from his true destiny as the great warriors of the dawning age. Ah, oh, equipment. Uh, equipment. I think, if I remember correctly, this is one we definitely want to do. We do get a little more debt, which we can't really afford too much of, but... Euro League. Ooh. Uh, I'd rather do Better Sneaky in the Order of St. George, but... Uh, let's see. It's not been raided. It's not been raided. These guys have been raided. Basho Kyrgyzstan. Or Basho Kordistan, what do we call it? Has been raided. Principal T. Vyatka. We should be able to win against the Euro League to begin with, right? They're not that strong at the beginning. I mean, there is a river here, which is really bad for us, but... These divisions shouldn't be god-awful, but hey, we'll see in just a little bit. Oh, a little bit of lag. Uh, has anything happened there? No? Good Thrum Wagner. I want even more command power attack. The role of our race. Against fate. Hey, yeah, Wolfgang, you out of here. Welcome to the hall and enjoy yourself. The guard tipped his hat down and returned Wolfgang's papers. Do not cause too much trouble, the guard smirked and winked. Wolfgang gave the man his thanks and proceeded into the building, opening the door to the din of the beer hall, with brothers young and old toasting each other while slave girls, ooh, worked in the aisles of the tables, carrying towering tank tankards of the thick, sour brew. He picked a vacant seat and sat in it. He ordered a drink from a slave. Addressing her curtly and without affection, when it arrived, he did not even dine to thank her and took it without comment. While enjoying his pen, a group of boisterous young men barged through the doors, exchanging crude jokes about one with one another. They were men from his platoon. He waved to them to join him. Soon his table became crowded with comrades, brothers in arms, with whom he shared the highest bond far beyond family that binds them deeper and thicker than mere blood. Quiet, quiet, order, order, men shot as they cleared the center of the hall, leaving a lone, red-faced man standing on a table, stumbling drunkenly side to side in an effort not to fall. His friends laughed at him, jeering on him to go on. He straightened his back, and making an earnest face, drew his breath. Comrades, brothers, countrymen, he started. Waving his arms wildly, he began his appeal without dormant or ostentation. Though without elegance or not upon notch, his words, railing against their inferiors, struck a chord with the crowd. His anger at the low station of the air and resonated with Wolfgang. He ended his tirade, saying, And this is what I suggest, brothers. A pooch! A pooch against fate. To rage against it, to burn it out in the struggle, to rebel against our destiny and make our own. The hall erupted into cheers, and Wolfgang found himself repeating the words, A pooch! A pooch against fate. So right now, um, our debt ceiling is 110%. It's still going up quite a bit. Um, our deficit is what? National debt's 0.43. Our deficit's 0 0.05. If we were to say, let's say, temper a tax cut, would we have enough money to cut down the deficit? Is it good to get rid of the deficit? No. I don't want to see what, but we, we, we spent, that's a lot of political power. That is quite a bit of political power, so I don't want to do that yet. But they're not that strong yet, too, either, so. We should be able to do well with five divisions here. They refuse tribute. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Let's win. Oh, if we can. For the love of God, we better win. If we can't win here, then we're not Aryans. It is equal. Oh, they do have intel advantage. Why do they have intel advantage? Who is this Felix guy, too? Good. We're slowly getting there. 
but proof by deed. Arianism is strength, and thus, only the strong are capable of being true Arians, and this is the maxim we must live by. If our nation is to avoid sinking into degeneracy, separating the master race from the subhumans is therefore of paramount importance. And to achieve this end, we have developed an elaborate test of resolve. Anyone who can demonstrate their ability to kill or capture at least five people will have amply shown that they are fit to walk among us. Already we have discovered several dozens of the worthy of using this method, some of whom were busy proving their Arianists, well before we even rose to power. Henceforth, all prisoners we capture deemed potentially suitable will be administered to this test. If they pass, they will be permitted to join the ranks. Our ranks. If not, we'll treat them as we do the rest of the subhumans. Oh, and we are losing now? Oh boy. I hope we don't lose. And if we do lose, well then, I'll do some funky stuff off screen to make sure that in our first combat here, we will win. Proof by deed. Oh, this is so sad. Arian war drill. The bell was rang early one morning. Last night's watch had returned, and now it was time for the Arians to practice their chosen art. Draped in camouflage, they went out of the barracks, sticking close to the undergrowth, in cases where a bomber might spot them in the last few days. The scouts of the Brotherhood had marked blind spots in the German bombing, and indicated these in their maps as training spots there. They would reveal and study the mysteries of war to strain themselves closer to the Viking ideal. Billam, a new initiate to the Brotherhood, stood at attention in the firing range, while his senior brother explained to them the uses and ways of the rifle. He put the stock against his shoulder and shot, hitting a target. He repeated this two more times, kneeling and prone. He reloaded it and instructed them on how to clear a jam in the firing mechanism, and that's how you use a rifle, he said. A weapon so simple that even you maggots can't fail at it. He walked up and down the line, abusing every member of the platoon. When he came to Billam's turn, he said, You fake air, and I bet you will fall on your rifle. And shoot yourself, but today I am feeling optimistic. He laid his index finger on Willem's chest, pressing it down to emphasize every word. You will go into the firing range, and you will prove yourself worthy of bearing the blood. Am I understood? Willem shouted, yes, sir, yes, sir. The brother gave him a slight smile. Good. After all this was done, the recruits took their arms turns, or took their turns of firing range. Willem proved himself to be a capable marksman, singled out by the brother as being the best in his platoon at the end, day's end. The Brotherhood gave him the ultimate honor. They dragged a slave out for this final spectacle. Willem took his, out his, took his aim and fired. A scream, and then silence. All for final victory. So we get more stability, more war support. We will replace segregated regiment with no racial integration. Lose some non-core manpower. That's fine. We will lose some recruitable population factor, which sucks. But get more recovery and organization. Increases racial integration and policy effectiveness. Replace Aryan cult with Aryan cult fully Aryan military. So you lose even more population, but you get more attack, recovery, and organization. Not bad. But now we do the Ubermensch March to War. And Army of the Pure versus Guide the Untermensch, which I don't think we can do... Yeah, because we went with uh, fully Aryan military this way. So we can't go this way, which we did last time, as well as by hook or by crook. I think we're going to go with the Ubermensch March to War. The formation of our elite fighting units is proceeding smoothly. We have extensively studied the methods and tactics of our brother Aryans in Germany, and use them as a basis for the formation of the greatest military force Russia will ever see. For every one of our soldiers that falls in a blaze of glory, he'll take a hundred subhumans with him. Our commanders will read works written by the likes of Guderian and Halder, and the original German, following their infallible examples of tactical prowess. <clears throat> Our squads, too, are organized along German lines. The machine gun will be at center, and therefore, only the most Aryan will be selected to wield it. Stimulants, manufactured by only the finest chemists in our territory, will be issued to push our troops further beyond their natural limits. For even the master race is subject to those. Soon, our army will be able to rival even the SS and an army of the pure. The Aryan military will, uh, will prove to be the salvation of Russia grows stronger by the day. In particular, a large number of training accidents that have recently occurred have proven to be a great boon, further weeding our forces of the week. More reforms are still necessary, however, if we wish for our troops to achieve their full potential. Our commanders have yet to be trained in large unit tactics, and an issue that can be quickly rectified by further study of the Vamox geniuses. There's also the question of strategy, but this is less important. All the Master Race needs to do is win battles, and they'll be able to live off the land just fine, and so little attention will be paid to unnecessary inconveniences like logistics companies. The Outsider. Repeat after me, I swear to uphold the values of my race, to honor my ancestors, and with my every action, to defend my nation to my dying breath. The hooded figure intoned these vows from his elevated seat in a deep, clear voice like the toll of a church bell. The two kneeling men, soon to be initiates into the Brotherhood, followed along dutifully. After several days of elaborate rituals, their entrance into the ranks of the Master Race was just minutes away. As they spoke, the recruiter looked each one over and made his judgments. The first was a lanky peasant with cold blue eyes and a cruel countenance. He was nothing more than a jumped-up farm boy out for blood, a thug, not an Aryan. The second man was far more intriguing. As far as anyone could tell, he was only a recent arrival to Pernheim. Pulled there inexorably by his vision of paradise, his zeal practically radiated off of him. 
and it was clear from his words that he was a talented speaker. The men, their oaths recited, waited patiently for the recruiter's next instructions. Rather than speaking, he pulled his revolver from his holster and threw it on the clattering, threw down clattering on the floor. Whichever one is worthy, kill your compatriot. Without hesitation, the outsider scrambled to the gun and fired round to his partner's throat. The round abruptly cutting off his protest, as the dying man gurgled noisily on his own blood. The recruiter was overjoyed. He had been right to see the newcomer's potential. Brother, congratulations! You are officially a member of the Aryan Brotherhood. With all the privileges it entails, tell me what is your name. Siegfried shoots, and I intend to advance far into the Brotherhood's ranks. Talent has a way of revealing itself, but proof by deed. Yvonne stood clutching his stomach in front of the rotting wooden building in which he and the rest of his unit were being imprisoned just three days ago. They had numbered over a hundred, now there are only twenty-four. They had been captured in a raid launched by the so-called Aryans against Gaini, and only surrendered once the ammo had run out. Evidently, this had made an impression on the opposing commander, as instead of shooting them on the spot, he had chosen to escort them back to the Brotherhood's territory now. Now, the very same commander stood before his assembled prisoners again began speaking. It is lunchtime, then, as you may know, and within our barracks. He's gestured towards a considerably more well kept structure behind him. We are serving hot food and water. Yvonne perked up upon hearing this. He and his unit hadn't eaten as much as a bread crumb to eat ever since he had been captured in. His only hydration had come from a leak in the roof during the rains of the previous night. Indeed, one was even able to see the faint outlines of the rib cages of several of his comrades. But good food, the officer continued, is something that only the worthy are deserving of. In the fighting three days ago, you all showed that you had the potential for the worthiness. This worthiness. The potential of being Aryan. Potential alone, however, is not good enough. At this, he drew and presented his pistol while a shoddily made copy of a German model. My proposition is simple. Any of you who can use this implement uh, to kill five of your fellows will have proven themselves Aryan enough to join us at the table immediately. Do not, he looked to the soldiers who stood at either side of him, try anything funny. Yvonne considered the officer's words for a long time, after all. Had not food and water been the reason he joined the military of Gainey in the first place? Then his mind wandered to his comrades. Their friendships he had developed. How they had fought side by side in the last round, no, he thought. Shaking his head, he wouldn't do it. At first, it seemed like as if his friends were of a similar mind, but after a moment had passed, one stepped forward and took the pistol. He was not strong enough, but the light of hope. Londra could hardly remember his life outside the camp. <clears throat> it had been so long, once he knew. He had been of some import among his peers. He had been a leader in his community with a wife and children, but his community had long since been profaned by the Nazi dudes that held him in thrall. As people murdered or enslaved, his sweet Alexandria had been worked to death only months into their imprisonment. The children, proud Yuri and Cheyenne, had been murdered only weeks into their stay in this heck. Somehow he had survived the back-breaking labor, the starvation, the near-constant beatings and humiliation. On some days, it seemed as though God himself had picked him to suffer as Job had. However, he had no delusions that the story would end on as a positive note as Job's. Andre dragged himself from the rack and trudged out of the slave barracks. It would be another long few days in the mine, and he felt that they would be his last. As Andre heaved his pick, he heard a commotion from the direction of the guard's barracks. Suddenly, an explosion rang out. A fireball rose from the administration building. In the aftermath of the explosion, a hot shot rang out, and the camp commander's head exploded. Finally, the guards around the mine entrance started to rally themselves, but before they could get far, a group of slaves armed with mining equipment had descended upon them. Andre not even realized he had joined them until he felt the pick pierce the nearest guard skull. Then a voice pierced through the fog of war. Come on, you dogs, death to the fascists. A group of partisans approached the mine, a man with the build of a woodsman at their head, and a strange man in a tattered uniform stood at his side, silent. <coughs> Well, glad to see you poor slobs join in on the fun. Come, we're getting you out of here, all of you. With those words, some hope, small hope, return to Andre's heart. The struggle for freedom has only just begun. And also, I did convert... Actually, I converted our divisions to Arsha Infantry Divisions just because I'd rather use just normal infantry. It just is much, much more fun to use. Also, I did cut down the debt just a little bit, not much. Uh, we a little bit of, we're spending a lot on army expense. We're spending a lot, on just period. Just period point. Zero five, the same depths as we had earlier. Inflation rose up quite a bit. Um, we did get a little bit of bump in GDP, and this is still going back up a little bit. Not great, uh, but our national debt is actually 0.315, which is a little better, a little more manageable, a little more growth, not bad overall. And I decided not to raid the Euro League because they're, they're a little difficult to kill off, just, just being honest with you. It's a little difficult to kill them off, but we will see what happens in a little bit. Just because I would like to raid other people. We did have to fight and defend against Viatka, so we did win against them, but it happens. The Aries Brotherhood's army composition is entirely Aryan. The brother can currently lose, exert loose control over the non Aryans in its territory. There's currently no brotherhood opposition to the foyer. Nice. Oh, there's no way in the world if we can't win against Euro League, there's no way we're going to win against Zataust. There's absolutely no god awful way we're going to actually do that. So we're going to wait for order to say George Bashkortostan as well. Yes. We should be able to win against them, right? We get plus twenty percent more attack, right? And did do like some sort of investments here. Now we do need to. We only have seven here, so we need to do at least one more to get another factory going here. So yeah, we're going to need to get some more electricity. The Uba bench marched to wall, 
And of course, we do an army of the pure. If you're going to re read this again, please go right ahead. And I've already selected the ones we don't want to do, so there's five here that we are interested in. We'll see what happens. An army of the pure, the brotherhood. With the direction that we've chosen for our armed force is finally seen through, we can now look towards employing this army both within our territory and abroad. Not only can we secure the hinterland from the roving bandits, who seek to subvert our brotherhood and destroy it from within, but also prepare for expansion. It's time to test the wives and probe our army's bo enemy's borders through raids of their fringe settlements. We'll be able to secure captives and loot, as well as access our new combat methods and improve them even further with practical experience in the upcoming struggle against a Slav. It is imperative that we ensure that no matter what. Our Aryan spirit remains a dominant guiding factor in our strategies. However, it's no secret that these strategies can and will be continuously improved for the glory of the Brotherhood. Nice. And get more research speed because we'll be here for a while. Oh. See? Seven divisions. Not bad. Um, even though these guys do kind of suck. They actually have less soft attack. Oh. Nice. Uh, 24.6 versus these guys who have 35, which is a more soft attack by the same time. Um, I don't know. I just wanted them... Oh, we actually have more army speed too, which is good. Uh, we're going to cut down on the number of divisions we're making just because we need more artillery and stuff. Uh, artillery is 65, which is not bad at all. If anything, we'll consolidate our units a little bit more because we won't have enough artillery, but that's fine. I don't really care. Uh, there you go. Nice and cover with. There you go. That's a little better. Come on. We can win here. I know we can. This guy's not god awful on attack. We can do it. We can do it. Anything else here? 6076. Come on. Oh, where are you guys going? Army of the Pure. And the Brotherhood, of course, is next. We have 0.49 billion. All right, 69. Come on. Come on. Maybe I should have attacked after. Uh, huh. We got the improvements for these guys. Looks like we are slowly improving. But now that they threw in more soldiers there. Hmm. Maybe not. Why can we not win here? If anything, if we lose here, then we definitely need a buff. Then army of the pure, though. Klaus, he already forgotten his name he's been born with. Looked up the, upon the originally assembled company with pride. He considered how closely they resembled the pictures they'd seen of the German hair, assembled before their wonderful foyer, down to the very helmets they wore. In the background, a Prussian-style band played a variety of German tunes such as Erika and Panzerli to set the tone. Slowly, Klaus's mind began wandering to the realms of the imagination. In his head, he imagined these proud soldiers conquering Russia and subjugating the subhumans once and for all. He thought of the swastika flying over our Congos and putting an end to Bolshevik Jewry that had plagued Russia for ha past past half century. But no, these were not mere fantasies. The men standing before him would now bravely charge into machine gun nests, if ordered, and take it with ease. They were the master race, every last one of them, and despite their admittedly small numbers, soon the entirety of Russia would be within their grasp. A tap on the shoulder shook him out of his fantasies. Energetically nodding, Klaus stood up and approached the podium to begin with his speech. Fellow Aryans, party comrades, at the end of the day, there is no need for me to enumerate all the events that have overwhelmed us with their spellbinding, unique greatness sounding familiar. And if we lose here, then we'll do some funky stuff off screen, just to make sure that we don't lose. Which does suck, like, our position is really, really bad, but we'll go ahead and read about instilling fear. Ever since the end of the West Russian War, the Germans have begun their terror bombing campaigns to leech and teach the lesser peoples to know their place in the hierarchy of this world. Every day, when the planes pass, we look towards the sky and see not terror but admiration. The Aryans that live beyond Russia fulfill their fate, and through merit alone reach the apex position among the blood. These bombs and terror are the tools to secure the dominance in Russia, following the example set by our German kin and superiors. We shall be the terror of the land and night while they reign in the sky and day. No longer shall our inferiors find the darkness of the refuge, as our brothers will ransack the countryside and aid the Aryans in the quest. They shall learn the only lesson an Untermensch ought to learn to fear, to be afraid of their superiors. Reform our raiders, through our, though our men are excellent in causing terror, proving to be the lesser people that even in the quiet and dead of the night, that they are not safe, the Brotherhood and its ideals demand still more. The Brothers, mighty as they may be, are disorganized and confused, and with an unclear command structure and rules of seniority. We looked to our silent benefactors, the Germans. With a centralized doctrine and the power of their blood, they were able to put the entirety of Russia to, to its knees. Following their example, we shall mend the structure of the Brothers' military arm. No longer shall brother and another bicker among themselves as who does what. Our senior brothers, effectively the officer corps of the Brotherhood, shall be granted formal authority to command. With these four reforms in place, we shall aspire to one day achieve the heights of the Germans. And we get more army speed, which is super beneficial. So I want to do disciplined raiding force, which sounds like a lot of fun. But I did this one last time, so instead of doing this route, we're going to go with autonomous battalions. Whatever the high command in Permheim might think. The officers and brothers on the frontiers know better when it comes to raiding. They know where the most vulnerable parts of the border lay and how to exploit weaknesses in the enemy's attention. With independence and a minimum of control, these battalions become as effective as they are chaotic, attacking without orders from headquarters, unpredictable in temperament and restraint. Instead of investing power into the general staff, we can give the 
give the informal practice of unprecedented operational freedom an official stamp. These battalions will become autonomous, free to raid the countryside as it please. They will tear through the lands of Russia anew, spread terror without mercy or exception. Now that the dogs of war are unleashed, the intermen shall learn to fear us again. Which isn't as good. It's definitely not as good as this. Max plan. That's a lot more max plan, which would be very good. Honestly, I think this makes more sense for us to go down, but we're going down the route I did not do last time. Strike at the arteries. The frontier units of the Brotherhood are now free to do in their do in the designated regions as they see fit. Encouraged by this newfound freedom, our independent battalions have struck out against our inferiors, stripping them of resources and people alike. As the night raids intensify, the Brotherhood's enemies will continue to grow weaker and weaker, unable to deal with the unpredictability and randomness of attacks. We can utilize this by dividing the regions into smaller chunks and assigning more units. We can increase the rate of raiding to the point of suffocation on the enemy's part. The sheer quantity and rapidity of the offenses will deprive them of the ability to recover. We shall hound them from dusk till dawn, hitting them while at pause until they are too weak to respond their equipment and weapons that we rest away from the Untermensch will help us secure the final triumph. So right now, we are, of course, waiting to do more raids. We do need some more political power. And we're making more divisions as well, but uh, what we could really use uh, is what? Industrial investments? No, we... Oh, we got more energy now, which is very good. More, at least, grid power. But now we need more production units for the future. Now we're out of equipment as well. We're really out of equipment, which is not very good. I've been trying to save our manpower as well, but yeah, we're out of manpower. But we do have 11 divisions. It's not bad. These guys are all now 10 combo with, with support artillery. So these guys definitely should be able to strike a little harder, a little faster, a little bit more, a little more precise. At least with a little more precision. So strike at the arteries and then test our theories. An area arrival. Our brothers watching over the Belaya for any intrusion by the filthy Bashkirs have reported to the commanders in Permheim of a very strange encounter. A party flashing an American flag recently crossed the river and was composed of not of Bashkirs but of Slavs led by a man they believed potentially Aryan. When the brothers moved to arrest him, he showed recognition of the uniforms and began speaking German. They are, they are therefore not sure what to make of the party. The man claims to be American, journeying across Russia to observe the states and societies that occupy it. And though we know well how, well how much corrupting subhuman influence exists in America. We cannot deny the basic possibility for Arianism to exist there. If we were to welcome him and showcase the superiority of our culture and race, of our purpose to bring strength and purity to our entire nation, it might, could do much for the foyer's cause. At the same time, however, there is a party of Slavs with them, who, in addition to possessing weapons, do not seem as subservient as non Aryans should be. He has additionally displayed some unease at the sight of the border guard's slave detachment. Some brothers have raised a concern that the entire construction of this American could therefore be a trick, and attempt to insert a spy into our lands. A decision must be made. What do we do with the supposed Aryan? We must receive him. The trickery of the Slav knows no bounds. His journey ends here. But to test our theories, under the shadow of the German plains, we have reformed our forces to reach the heights they attained. Now the Brotherhood looks at its men with pride for no army of Aryans more exemplary and capable as ever tread the lands of Russia in triumph. The examples of the Germans have aided us well, and the strength of the blood has carried us thus far. The time is ripe for a test of our power and a trial that will redeem the worth of our bonds. Uh, we look to our neighbors. To the south lay Bashkiria, with its pretensions to independence and self-determination, to our kin. Our kin pine for liberation from the Untermensch, and the blood wishes to head, heed their call. To the north lay Belrezniki, where wells of oil, resources, and motorized plans wait, await for their uh, use in the hands of a brave Aryan. Whatever we choose, we must prepare. The brothers will clean their guns, train wrist, and rest, for a failure in this is not an option. No true Aryan. Our prudence in receiving this new arrival is well placed, for he was no true Aryan. Although he recognized the superiority of our equipment design, although he spoke German, although his honeyed words claimed friendship and discovery, his actions proved otherwise, and our brothers were vigilant enough to observe him. Vigilant enough to protect the purity of spirit, purity of form, purity of essence that the Aryan embodies, purity that this arrival clearly did not possess. For what true Aryan would willingly travel with armed Slavs without careful overwatch? What, what true Aryan would treat them as, as equals? What true Aryan would concern themselves with the plight of the subhumans? No true Aryan indeed. And so both he and they were therefore treated as any other suspect non Aryans. Disarmed, placed in chains, and marched towards Permheim, all except one, a Slav woman who attempted resistance and found what was left of her dumped in the forest in response. The brothers overseeing the factories around her capital have been informed of the imminent arrivals and will soon find places they can work to support the betters. In doing so, they can serve the purpose destined to them and deserve to them. And if they show themselves unwilling to do so well, the brothers are most skilled at applying proper discipline. The Slav within will always make themselves known, of course. Must save just in case, just because this is my third time fading in, fading out, or second time, I guess, technically. But whatever. Eleven divisions might be a bit too much, but then again, we don't have enough. Eh, we do have enough army XP to do this. Uh, I want these guys to be 20 combo with, so get bigger, get thicker. We're gonna just make these guys just thick little daddies. <clears throat> Peace conference is over. Not bad. Um, I want to combine these guys, but I'm gonna wait. We need, we need one more manpower. Holy crap! 
Test our theories, my friends. All right, let's see. Scavenge for loot, yes. And prepare a raid, and because of that, I kept down GDP the debt, that even more. We don't have a real, lot of growth. I did cut down army spending quite a bit, but we can invest this. Pay off debt. And debt is 0 0.135. And 3.55 is not... 3.533, I mean. It's not bad, either. And if we can successfully raid here. Oh, stop training, stop training. Come on, stop training. Then, we can probably get that done, too. But happy November, everybody. Ah, they refuse tribute. But we do have 42 soft attacks, so that's not too bad. Let's get some more organization first, and then head on in. Right of Ascension... Um, honestly, up next, I'm not sure what we want to do. I want more manpower, trainer troops. But we do need to keep some of our political power here, too, anyways. This goes up whether they're here or not, so that's fine with us. Terrorize the Bashkirs. Ever since the end of the West Russian War and the collapse of any central authority in the region, the Bashkir declared itself independent, a state that bases itself on the notion of self-determination. They sustain this illusion by suppressing the cries of help from her kin, even as they suffer under the yoke, unable to fulfill the destiny set by the birth. The Bashkirs have deluded themselves into thinking that they can rule over the blood. It is time to make them pay for this insolence, rather than Bezniki. We shall focus our efforts against the Bashkirs. Their villages, towns, and even cities will be made to pay the price of their illusion and cruelty. We will tear them down and rob them of everything they have, as the blood demands vengeance and the race demands justice, so we shall deliver. Our kin shall once again be free. Look at that, we got more money. 0 0.0013 billion. Get a little bit more treasure. Nice. Oh, we get more manpower too. And political power. Nice. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Fighting over the river sucks. So, we'll see what happens. Um, economically... Okay, that doesn't do much, but... That gives us a lot more leeway here, and this is looking not too bad. Food for hungry, if you want to read that, please go ahead. Oh, ooh, we get 0 0.026 more billion. Nice! Political power, stability, war support? Yes, please. Does it, help? it does help out, so I'm not going to say not, not by much, but it does definitely, 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 definitely help out. Now, we could train our troops... 27% chance, 27% chance, 27% chance, and 18% chance. Our immune professionals of societal development will begin to slowly improve. Um, that's not bad. You get 10 more army XP as well. That's pretty strong. 10 more army XP. Industrial investments will be quite good as well. I would like that. We do have enough energy for now. Um, another production you could be very good. You need more manpower though, just period. Or... Cause that's not bad. Getting that 10 army XP is going to be so helpful as well. And a thousand more manpower. We already don't have enough manpower. You know what? Let's do this one. We'll do it once. Because right now our army professionalism is what? It's 0 0.05. Not great. We do this once. I do want to do like more external investments, but we'll do that one once. It's fine. Did we get it? 18% chance? Nope. Well, 200 percent is not bad right there. That's actually quite good. Test our theories. Let's sell more army XP and terrorize the Bashkirs, because why not? 0.52 billion. Never enough. Still have a deficit of 0.15, though. Hmm. Of course, we, we already slashed the army spending all the way down. It's not bad for growth, too. What is this? Ah, yes. Get a little more debt. That's fine. Equipment. That's fine. That's fine. It's whatever. Liberate the Aryans. The cowardly Bashkirs are in full retreat. Their forces shattered and fleeing. After we bested them in battle, their armies have retreated deeper into Bashkiria to defend the lands of their people. In doing so, they've abandoned the region that lay in our borders, villages, and towns filled to brimming with our kin. With no obstacles in the way, we can proceed to accomplish the original objective of our incursion into Bashkiria. We shall go into Bashkiria again, but this time we are not there to destroy, but to recover. We shall scour the borders for our kin, and then select from them whoever is worthy of joining us. We shall transport them by the truckload into Permheim, and into the bosom of the Brotherhood, where they may not be ever be lost again. Our brethren must be must relish in joining us, and together we shall march ever forward towards our destinies. Getting more political power, manpower, and army XP. Nice. Very nice. Uh, do we actually raid them, or, or do we just like beat them up? Now, I like this up and then down, and then up and then my whip back down, and then up and then my little bit down. Good tax cut, but that's actually not too bad already. Game more research speed, because everything we do here has got to be really effective. And I'm going to come to this page a whole bunch. 30. Oh, that's a lot of. Uh, huh. Our death has the falling effects. Helps us lose political power. Well, it doesn't really help us at all, but whatever. Towards new pastures. The brother has triumphed. Fate alone has affirmed its ideals. It has succeeded in the trial that had set itself. Set for itself. With the Untermensch defeated and the host shattered and dissipated to the winds, the brother now stands on his feet, not merely admiring the bombers as they pass it by, but reaching out, imagining itself on a flight with a kin. The day will come, even if it is far away, for the blood does not lie. 
For now, however, the Brotherhood looks past its borders and its immediate surroundings. Russia is vast and in its size lay opportunities. We shall strike out, carving a bloody path through it, stealing and looting uh, whatever we can get our hands on. The road to attaining equal merit to our German brothers is long, and the Untermensch would assail us every step of the way. However, like the Germans, we will triumph against the odds. We're losing political power every single day. Why? Why are we losing political power? Budget balance? Ooh, that is really bad. That's actually extraordinarily bad. We're actually losing PP every single day. Dysfunctional high command, train our troops. Well, that's, that's why. And import new industrial equipment as well is pretty bad. Uh, income taxation policy, slavery, conscription, voting coverage, eligible administration. Holy crap, we're losing political power. That's so bad. And they're these pastures, and they'll do the stuff on the left side too. That's really not good. Hmm. If only we could raid more. Can we raid more? No one has loot. Oh, home away from home. Roland landed the aircraft on the makeshift runway, giving out a big sigh of relief. He pushed the latch open and came out into the cool Russian air. Roland looked up at his plane, seeing the singed and burning left wing of the plane. He cringed, and he felt his legs grow weak as he realized how close it was to exploding. It was meant to be a regular bombing raid for the cadets. He was lucky to have it being gotten out, let alone land it safely. He heard footsteps nearby, and he turned to face whoever it was. In front of him, Roland saw a small group of men in uniform. It took a moment for him to realize it, but they were of the German army. Good, Roland thought. He was in safe territory. Hello, said one of the men in flawed German. Are you with the Nazis? I'm an uh, Obergefreiter, Freiter, and the 34th Air Division of the Luftwaffe, sir. I require assistance for my aircraft to reach my home base. And the men looked at one another in confusion before turning to him, saying, We can assist you, Herr Officer. Roland smiled and stepped aside as he began crowding around the plane. One of the actual speakers stood off to the side with Roland as he began probing it. Herr Officer, it is an honor to meet a German. You must not get a lot here. Never. Are, are your uniforms surplus? Yes, mostly scams for what we could find. You have my sympathies. Who is the leader of this Reichskommissariat? The man didn't respond and seemed confused in front of them. The man had taken out tools and began repairing the wing. Do you not know? We don't have Reichskommissar, sir. Duh. Yeah. We do have the fire. The man did a salute, raising his arm in the air as he stared into space. Wait, this isn't this isn't this Muscovine? Nine comrade. You're Russians then, yes, but why are you helping me? That's what good earrings do. That's what good earrings do, don't you know? External investments. I don't know why. My goal is every time I just cut down the debt. It does you don't always have to cut it down to nothing, but like I just want to cut it down to nothing. I just want to. After towards new pastures, a city on four footing. The great decline the of the city of Permheim mirrors to a great extent the decline of the Russian race over the years, just as we in ancient times were a proud and powerful people, now laid low by insipid monarchy or degenerate communism. Permheim was once the industrial center of the region, but it is now a shell of its former self, devastated by war and resource shortages. We know from the doctrine and example of the Germans that the only path to rejuvenate a race addled by defeat and degeneracy is war, constant war without end and against all around us. Permheim, too, will be lifted up from the brink of destruction by war. We need to put military preparation above all else. As many of our resources as possible will be moved over to producing weapons and munitions. This city will reach its salvation, but then the first step will be a baptism by blood. Give more army XP, more war support. That'll be good. Um, can we do any raiding yet? Yeah, but Vyaka? Ooh, probably not. We're still losing PP. We get point one a day. Holy crap, that's bad. Um, so toss. Yeah, this, 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 this is a group I think we want to raid. We definitely need to raid them. We need more manpower. How do we get more stability? It keeps going down. Down, 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 down. It's so bad. 35.4. Ooh, that is not good. Temp tax hike might be in our future. Yep. Oh, we have, we have literally no inflation, too. That's not bad, at least. Twisting pastures. Very good. And then a city on war footing. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys here. I'm not sure which way we should go. Should we go with work for your bread and labor for your nation? Or... Should we go work for your life and labor for your betters? Let me know in the comments below which way we should go. I kind of like this one. Increase your GDP by 2.5%, which is not as much as this side. Growth will increase by 0.5. Inflation will increase by 0.25. Or this side increases inflation by 0.5, and our GDP growth goes by 1%. I kind of prefer this one, but let me know which route we should go. As well as this one, Industrial Army. Um, reopen the munitions plants. And Aryan Legions, which I think we did this one last time, so I think I'm feeling more towards reopen their refineries, as well as Aryan Cavalry, but I'll let, let you guys decide for both of these, but unfortunately, I will have to end the episode here, to make it a little shorter video than I have done in the past, especially for videos in TNO, but if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a like, subscribe if you are new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we decide the fate for the Aryan Brotherhood, thanks for watching, have a great 
rest of your day.